Yeah, all of my productions. I hear a lot about this red, black, and green Negro. A lot of controversy. A lot of strife. A lot of harsh comments. Fake pro-black. All kinds of name calling. Let me tell you something. You have con men and you have real men. Will a man pose as a hotep negro and con the masses? Yes, he will. Will a fake Jamaican want to be dreadlock roster claim that he's for Rastafarian and Holly Selassie and he's just using his political motive to just get dollars in, in his pocket? Yes, he will. You have a lot of guys that use black power as a catalyst to use their tycoon ways to swindle money out of poor people's pockets. Because some people just, like I say, they just don't know. They kind of slow and they fall for that feel good talk. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, folks, you don't know where that money's going at. And when you look at your situation, is it even getting any, any better? People give fake promises. Take your money out of your community. Live out in the suburbs somewhere. Give you a little phony speech. And nothing gets done to help your state, your state of being, how you going to get out of poverty, how the inner city schools going to stick still that's suffering, undereducated, undermarginalized, infrastructure fucked up. Look, we got to realize we got people in it just for the money. And they got the dialogue and they got the, and they got the research and the history. I'm telling you, they can speak it real good, but don't mean they for the, for the cause. See, that's the trick. They know the history, but is they doing something with the history they have, you know, studied and have accomplished? You know, you got historians, you got doctors, you got uh, engineers. Everybody ain't going to be on, be on this pro-black boat. Go back to Africa movement. I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of people against that because some of us are patriots of the United States and we don't want to give up. This, this this way of life. We have modern day house Negroes. Yes, we do. You know, to, to check the, the activists, you know, they're the ones who stand between the activists and the pro, real pro blacks and political and the radicals. As soon as they get out of hand, they go back secretly and tell the white man. To get a few little cookies from the cookie jar. See, that's what you got to realize. You know, you get out here, blah, 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 and speak it and live it. But it's going to be people that's going to every time, every turn, try to sabotage your movement. So, therefore, you have to get yourself armed up. You have to get your posse that's true or whoever you collab with and protect yourself because you can't go out here just thinking you're going to do anything and you ain't going to get no repercussions because you sadly mistaken. You will get repercussions. So, this pro-black. You have a lot of men on social media, uh, men out on bricks. You know, you see in every city uh, the true... Hebrew Israelites, the guys on the corner looking like uh, comic flicks, meaning they be dressing kind of funny to me. I don't know what's all that for, but that's they. I guess that's their paraphernalia, and that's the way they do things. But it's a lot of anger towards those guys because they speaking from the Bible and they debunking a lot of stuff, and a lot of people feel uncomfortable with those guys. I mean, I've seen various videos of almost fist to cuffs came down to the guys on the street, G, well, Church Graver and Christ, GOCC. 
I seen one. It was a it was a good video. It was uh, Rastafarians. They was pissed off at them, and it got to a point that no one could give even get their word in because everybody was in chaos. And then it came, then it came. You know, it calmed down with some cussing and stuff. But this is how heated it gets when you talking this dialogue of uh, activism, spiritual spiritualism different ideologies, a lot of people do not uh, agree, and they can't agree without agreeing peacefully. They want to agree with almost coming to a gun or a knife or a fist fight, and I see that as, I see that as too emotional. That's one thing about us as black people, we are too emotional over emotional meaning that we, we we do stuff out of emotion we ain't i mean some of us are not serious and down hardcore it's only a segment of black folks like that very few so i just want to share this with you you know another segment of my documentary talking about the fake pro blacks and the con men and let's go ahead and add the preachers in too. Let me tell you something. Again, you got people that's clergy, don't mean they good clergy. You got your good and your bad. And that's a dangerous thing because you can be leading your congregation straight to hell if you misguide your flock. So I hope people really pay attention to this. I hope a man don't be up there playing with his congregation because he can he lead himself to hell and his congregation because they follow him. I mean, when you listen to sin, you become sin. When you view sin, you don't have to even be doing the act. When you view sin, you are just as guilty as a person committing the act. So, therefore, you participating in hellish ways. And that's what I'm talking about as far as the preaching. Now, I have a, I have a concern with so-called activists and guys just spitting out their mouth and women talking about these preachers of pimps. They, uh, they're pimping the people, they're pimping the... Now, hold up. Who said a preacher supposed to be poverty-stricken? Who, who says, you know, the preacher is supposed to have holes in his shoes and dirty suit? At least the man, this is, this is, the, this is America. You, you got to make money. You got to make money somehow or be a bum. So th he makes money off of his church, off of the donations from the church members to, the, you know, to bring forth more prosperity within the religious sector. So. When it gets to a point that people are pissed off at the clergy, some of the clergy is doing wrong, it's always it's going to be a battle within the institution of the Christian church. And that's what I see. You're always going to have those that will sit there and criticize the, the uh, black church, but they don't. They just sit on a bench. That's all they do. They're critics. You know. If the man or woman that is the pr practitioner of Christian faith <clears throat> are doing fundraisers, helping their members come out of problems, people are being inspired by them, and they're going into the community grassroots, that's, that's when I say I take my hats off to people that do that. But I do have a problem when you have these multi-billionaire churches and the members squabble in poverty. And the preacher and some of the people that's in, in his arena are living fat while the, while the majority, while the rest is just living low. There's some kind of robbery going on here. So, I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to paint a picture, 
let you see and analyze what I'm talking about. So when you go out there, if you see this in your life being played out, you'll know the certain ammunition to use to fire your weapon and get the hell out of that situation. Meaning that in your mind, okay, let's not get it confused, in your mind, you must see between that dilemma. Meaning that if you see that going on, you know it's not good, get out of there. Simply because it's not helping you, it's helping them. They filling their pockets with gold and selling you some BS. Fake pro blacks and crooked preachers. Now, we have a problem stereotyping the whole lot of them. No, you don't do that. It's a sector of them. It's a, just a partition of those practitioners and they fake practices. The Bible speaks of false prophets. Yes, that's what the Bible speaks of, false prophets. And it will be more in the ending days. Guys walking around thinking that you think they, you worse with the, you worse with kiss the ground they walk on. Their feet's all walking in fire. You don't even know it. You can't judge a book by its cover. It's what's in the mind. That's what counts. Not what's, what a person got on or how articulate they speak. Because they can be the other way. So I want y'all to think about that. I need y'all to ponder about that. Now, this, 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 uh, Recording is going way overdue, so I'm going to keep going with it. Now, I'm going to move on to something else. If it's click off, if it clicks off, I'm just going to go to another uh, segment, produce another segment on this documentary. Now, we talk about the twerk issue. Women is not going to respect themselves if men don't respect themselves. Meaning that, man, you're a part of the problem. You are the antagonist. You are the lust, lust hound. You put your woman on pedestal to shake her flesh across the social media airways. That's, that's what's going to happen. You applaud this. You you encourage this. I hear a lot of guys complaining. Okay, let's be honest about it. I know y'all look at it too, or y'all wouldn't be complaining about it. It's just some of you are mad because you wish you only had, but, you know. That's, that's on you. My thing is this. Don't cry. And it's not, it's like we put the, we put the, we fall victim of saying that it's the woman's fault. No, it's not all the woman's fault. We got a sector of men. I must keep on like the sector word. We got a sector of men that drives and runs and fuels off of that, meaning that we got thirsty cats that want that. And besides, if that's what it is, unfortunately that's what it is. But I know it's demeaning because there's a lot of sisters doing that. And my dang is this. When does it become, you know, when it becomes a situation like when we think about women just as flesh and something to squirt our chemicals on, our semen on, like it's, some, like, like it's just an object and nothing else. No passion, no love, no no family, no family oriented mind, no with how, no, just don't know how to be a woman. Then that's why this becomes a problem. Because the younger people grow up and see this and they sponge to that. This is why that becomes a problem. And that's why it's really not good. Because it sends a message about two other nationalities. And that's all they think of the black woman as a big ass woman. A Sarah, Bart a Sarah uh, Bartman. And hot and top Venus. And all they see is a big ass Jungle, jungle bunny, you know, and a ghetto, and a ghetto gagger, and 
This is all they think about the black women. So they stereotype our women as such. And this is why we have to stop demeaning ourselves and cooning on the social media networks. Now, I see, see, I see, you know, why some of you men get mad. Well, it's only right. You should. And I see what you come, I see where y'all coming from. That's why I'm adding my little couple cents into the basket. Yes, it is demeaning. Yes, it is wrong. But the only way to, to circumvent this and stop this, black men have to stop upholding that. Meaning we are part of that problem. If we get serious, maybe that shit I wear off. But as long as we got a sect of men that view our women as as uh, no life trash and whores, well, that's, that's going to keep going on. So you really got to think about that. Because that can evolve into something else that involve that that involve involves in something else. It develops in something else. It's not just that, it causes problems. You know, some people can't handle that stuff. Then then you got to, then you that's just feeding the sexual deviance to people that sex sexual you got sexual dysfunctions. You see? But this is how this devil works. You know, he put that signal in men's minds and women's minds because both, you know, you got lesbians, whatever. You got both sectors, both sex, sexual orientations that watch that and, and, and they get aroused off of that. And this is why they do that and they do it for the views. But again, it, again, it sends a clear message across the board that our women is looked upon as just sex objects. And, it, and that's not rightful so. We have prominent black women. We have women that's really smart and everything. But people will always look at us, look at them like that, because we keep projecting, us, projecting ourselves like that every day upon social media. So this ends my segment of this one, All of My Productions.